Over a thousand years ago, the Persian astronomer Abd al-Rahman al-Sufi observed an extended structure in the night sky, a small cloud that we now know to be the Andromeda galaxy. Over the centuries, many more of these clouds were found, but it took 900 years for astronomers to firmly establish that they were not simply astronomical objects within our own Milky Way. These objects were whole other galaxies. As more and more galaxies were found, particularly in the 19th and early 20th centuries, astronomers observed that they had a great diversity in appearance, otherwise known as morphology. As a first step to understanding how galaxies formed and evolved, astronomers began grouping them together based on similar appearances, forming a morphological classification scheme. The most famous of these is the Hubble tuning fork. Hubble divided galaxies into elliptical galaxies and spiral galaxies, with the intermediate lenticular, or S0 class, in between. Elliptical and lenticular galaxies are collectively known as early type galaxies, because of their simple appearance. Spiral galaxies are known as late-type galaxies because of their complex structure. Elliptical galaxies have a smooth spheroidal appearance with little internal structure. They're dominated by a spheroidal bulge and have no obvious thin disk. Elliptical galaxies are divided into subclasses based on their apparent flattening. E0 galaxies are circular through to E7 galaxies, which are highly elongated. On the far right of the diagram, the SD class of spiral galaxies are essentially the opposite, with a prominent disk and no clear central bulge. Most obviously, spiral galaxies all show spiral arms, though when viewed edge-on, the arms may not be visible. As we move back along the Hubble tuning fork, we find spiral galaxies with increasingly large bulges and more tightly wound arms, when seen face-on. The lenticular class have similarities to both spiral and elliptical galaxies. They have a prominent bulge and a prominent disk, but no spiral arms. The rectangular looking structures found in the centres of many galaxies are called bars. Both lenticular and spiral galaxies also come in barred and unbarred varieties, giving rise to the two prongs of the tuning fork. And finally, there is a class of irregular galaxies that don't fit any of the previous described types. These are mainly low-mass galaxies that are highly asymmetric with very chaotic structures. Other galaxies that may sometimes be put into this category are merging galaxies, where two galaxies are in the process of crashing into one another, leading to very dramatic morphologies. So why go to the effort of classifying galaxies in this way? Well, disks and bulges are thought to form in very different ways, and so understanding whether a galaxy is mostly bulge, mostly disk, or a mixture of both is related to how it formed. Disks consist mostly of stars on circular orbits, all in the same plane, resulting in the flattened circular structures we see in spiral galaxies. These disks of stars likely formed in a gentle fashion from a disk of gas over many billions of years. Bulges consist of stars on random orbits, giving them their spheroidal shapes. Bulges may have been formed by the mergers of two or more galaxies, by internal dynamical processes in disk galaxies, or from the collapse of massive clouds of gas early in the universe. You may have noticed that spiral and elliptical galaxies don't just differ in their structure, but also in their colours as well. Spiral galaxies are predominantly blue, whereas elliptical and lenticular galaxies are red or yellow. The colour of a galaxy tells us about the average age of stars in that galaxy. Massive stars are very hot and are blue-white in colour, but these stars burn their fuel very quickly and die after only a few million years. Low-mass stars, which are very long-lived, are cooler and much redder. Therefore, blue spiral galaxies contain many recently born, hot, massive stars and are actively forming new stars. In contrast, elliptical galaxies contain mainly colder, red, old stars and stopped forming new stars billions of years ago. As well as stars, spiral galaxies contain lots of gas, the fuel for star formation, and dust, a product of star formation, whereas elliptical galaxies have very little gas and dust, which is consistent with their lack of young stars. The Hubble tuning fork is the most widely used classification scheme, but it does have some significant limitations. Spiral arms can be hard to identify when a galaxy is seen close to edge on, so based on morphology alone, 
it can be difficult to differentiate spiral and lenticular galaxies. Similarly, when seen close to face-on, it can be hard to distinguish a disk from a bulge, making it hard to decide whether a galaxy is elliptical or lenticular. Astronomers now believe bars to be relatively short-lived structures, and there's little physical difference between barred and unbarred galaxies. Most importantly, the Hubble classification is not physically motivated, and the sequence represents a continuum of properties and not an evolutionary or chronological sequence. Astronomical research is helping to improve this scheme, linking it more closely to the physical processes of galaxy formation.